Hi everyone, it's Dr. D. Today I wanted to talk to you about the discussion facilitation assignment. I've gotten a few questions that keep cropping up and I wanted to address them by kind of describing this assignment and actually describing the purpose of this assignment. I think that understanding why I've assigned this to you and why I've created it in the way I have um, will help you understand what it is that you're actually supposed to do. So the purpose of this assignment, of this discussion facilitation assignment is twofold. First, I wanted you to get a skill out of this class and out of this assignment, and that is the skill of argumentation. One of the kind of most persuasive ways of getting people to see things the way you see them is by using logic and reason. At least in our Western society, in our American culture, that's the way we tend to value uh, persuasion. So what I'm teaching you with this assignment is how to stake your claim, support your claim with evidence, and craft arguments to explain your claim. Um, if you've ever tried to explain to someone why something is the way it is, being able to take those three steps will help you to persuade them uh, of the kind of the information uh, of your perspective on things. So that's the skill. That's, that's the skill that I'm hoping you'll get out of completing this assignment. The other aspect of this assignment that I want you to get out of it is I want to create a course where we're talking about things that you care about. And so the second purpose of this course is for you to decide the course content. You're deciding this course content in three different ways. First, you get to choose the specific topic of your claim. Now, you've already submitted that, um, but that claim that, you're, that you've created as groups is really specific to a topic. And if you hadn't made that claim, we wouldn't be talking about that topic. So that claim is how you get to decide what topic we're going to talk about in this class. The second is by submitting that evidence and discussion question, you are um, choosing basically a reading in this course and then having students discuss that reading. You're getting people to talk about the topic that you've chosen um, and then the specific reading that you've chosen. And then finally, the last aspect of course content that you get to decide is test questions, which which is just test questions. You get to decide what the test questions are. What is the most important and relevant information about that topic that students should be studying and should be tested on? You get to choose that. Okay, I have a say in it too because I read them and I am only going to put the best test questions on the test, the ones that don't make sense or the ones that are too kind of finicky in particular. I'm, I'm not going to put those on the test. So there's, I am, I am going to, you know, do some gatekeeping here um, as kind of an, an expert in, in writing tests for college students. Um, but you are still deciding the content of those test questions, right? So um, this assignment helps develop your argumentation skills, but it also helps you be in control of this course. What are we talking about in this course? So with that in mind, I'm going to address some of the specific questions that um, have come up a few times from, from students. Um, first, uh, I've had a few questions about the group effort, kind of the, the group nature of this assignment. Since this is an online class, my expectations for group work and collaboration are pretty low. I realize that you don't have time in class to get together, that you're all in different schedules, that you have some people who respond quickly to email and some people who don't. And that's why the only part of this assignment that is completed as a group is making the claim. I wanted you to collaborate to decide what is the topic that we want to talk about. That's really the collaborative effort I wanted out of this. All of the follow-up stuff is individual because you as individuals need to practice staking that claim and then supporting that claim and arguing for that claim. So all of that skill is really individual work. Um, Second, another question that I've gotten a bunch is where do I even submit all of this? And 
so there's two kind of components to this because the everybody seems to have figured out where to submit their claim. Everybody's already submitted it. That part of the assignment is done and gone. But students seem to be struggling with where to submit the discussion question and their evidence. And where you want to put your evidence and discussion question is where your classmates can see it so that they can talk about it, so that they can read the evidence that you've submitted and they can answer the discussion question that you've written. So you want to put that in the discussion board that's associated with your module. So if you are in a group that's doing module six, you want to put your discussion question and your evidence in discussion board six, the discussion board that's in module six, right? That's where you're putting it. Um, so don't put it in the, don't put it underneath the claim that you submitted in that separate discussion board, right? That discussion board was really just for submitting your claims to make sure that you weren't submitting a claim that was the same or the same topic as somebody who's also associated with your um, module. What you're wanting to do is go to the module that you're assigned to, go to the discussion board where your classmates are discussing the module content and post your discussion question there so that your classmates can discuss your topic, so that classmates can read your evidence and respond to your discussion question. Now, when you're writing that post, make sure I, that, that you're modeling your post um, on my discussion board posts, right? So what you're wanting to write is a little blurb that gives some context. You want to make sure to cite your source, right? Put your evidence in there. The way I prefer to do it is I tend to use kind of a more APA style citation where at the end of the sentence, I put parentheses with the author and the year, and then I create a hyperlink for that author and year so you can click on it and it takes you to the source. If you prefer to put the URL, that's fine. Um, but there's no need to kind of start your post with your evidence and then describe your evidence and then separately do um, a discussion question in which you also include context. The context, all you really need to write is that discussion question with context. So long as you're linking your evidence in there, you don't need to add a description of your evidence. So just link to your evidence, talk about your evidence as though your classmates are perfectly capable of clicking on the link and reading or watching or listening to whatever you've chosen for them. Um, and then then pose your open-ended discussion question to get people talking about this evidence that you found that you thought was so interested, so interesting that you wanted to talk more about it, you wanted to read about it, and you want your classmates to read about it too. So that's where to post, that's how you're supposed to post. By the way, when it is not your turn to be posting um, that um, the, the discussion question, you want to make sure that in that module's discussion board, you're replying to one of my discussion questions, but you're also replying to one of the group facilitator discussion questions. So make sure that you're scrolling down to the posts, right, that I post the, the team's claim, and I say, group members, right, post your uh, discussion questions and evidence below here. Other students, make sure you're responding to one of these, pick one of those discussion questions that your classmates has written um, to respond to. Make sure that at least one of your posts is a response to one of those discussion questions. So one of your, dis your responses can be to mine, one of them to theirs, but if you choose, you can also respond to two of your classmates' discussion questions. Finally, when it is your turn to be posting a discussion question, that doesn't mean you don't participate on that discussion board, you still have to participate in the discussion board. You still have to answer uh, some discussion questions. You still need to be reading your classmates' um, evidence and responding to their discussion questions. You can choose to respond to somebody in your own group. Uh, you can choose to respond to somebody not in your group, but even when it's your turn to post a uh, discussion question, that doesn't mean that you don't have to participate. You still have to participate in the discussion discussion board. Um, so make sure that you are posting your um, discussion question and evidence and then also posting those two uh, responses to the discussion questions that other people have asked. Um, finally, the test questions, I have included that assignment in every module to make it a little bit easier. 
The um, due dates are really dependent, um, just like the, the, the evidence and discussion question is dependent on what module you're assigned to. The test question assignment is dependent on the module that you've been assigned to. But essentially, the deadline is the Wednesday right after your module ends. Um, I've done that so that you can read all of your classmates' um, comments, uh, right? Because they have until Tuesday to submit those um, those responses to your discussion question. So this will make sure that you've got even a little bit of extra time after all those have been posted to see if there's anything in the conversation there that strikes your imagination for writing a test question. So when you're writing those test questions, make sure that you're following the guidelines. These need to be multiple choice questions. They need to have five answer options. You need to tell me which one is right, right? You like highlighted and yellow or bolded or whatever, put an asterisk risk next to it. Make it clear to me which one is the right answer. Um, and make sure that these are application questions. You don't want to be giving me definition questions. Anybody can write those and then people can just look them up. It doesn't require any thinking. And the whole point of an exam is to make sure that you're understanding the material, not just that you're capable of memorizing or even just of reading. Because with online tests, we all know you it's open book, right? You can just look up whatever you want. Um, so I'm not interested in people being able to go back to an article and read a sentence and get the answer. I want people to actually be thinking about the article that you sent them to read or thinking about the story that you had them listen to or the movie or episode that you had them watch and have them think about that and then answer your question. There still has to be a right or wrong answer, of course. It's still a test. Um, but there are absolutely ways of writing test questions that require some kind of human thinking. And I've given you some examples of how to do that in the assignment description. So make sure you check that out. Hopefully this video has addressed some of the concerns that students have had and addressed some of the questions that keep coming up from students. And hopefully understanding my purposes with this assignment helps you to complete the assignment. I want you to get to choose what we're talking about. I want you to share those um, ideas and those resources with your classmates. I want your classmates to respond to that evidence that you've found, to that discussion question that you came up with. And I want your classmates to know that this evidence that you spent so long finding and sharing with them and trying to come up with ways to discuss with them is important enough that it's going to be on the test. So they should absolutely read it. So that's the idea behind this. I'm kind of trying to get you to take control over the content of this course so that we get to talk about the things that you want to talk about, not just the things that I think are interesting. Okay, thanks so much for listening, and I'll be seeing you online.